here's another POS Dell, um, one of a million. This is a Latitude. Um, I don't remember the model on this one. Um, I think it's just a CTO machine, so it could be just a generic little uh, something or other. Um, it's a PP01L. That's about as generic as it gets. Um, as you can see, I'm in the middle of some uh, repair work on this one. Um, I was looking for a machine to give my uncle for his girlfriend. Um, they can't really afford a nice laptop, so um, this one was actually given to me, and uh, it's in rough shape, um, relatively. I ended up adding, I, I had one of these kicking around, a um, mini PCI wireless card, I, I threw that in. That's actually from another Dell, and uh, ooh, crap, alright. Problem all right, you just saw one of the issues. The problems with this laptop are two things. The screen hinges are as weak as it gets. It can't really hold itself up anymore. The keyboard is worn out. It has a lot of uh, shiny spots and all the heavily used keys. In fact, some of them are starting to lose their numbers. So this laptop was used um, fairly regularly. Um, probably by I think it may have been used as an executive's machine or something like that. Um, it was it was heavily used, um, probably for uh, work-related things. It originally came from BAE Systems, as far as I know. But anyway, um, it still works. It does. It boots right up. Um, but there's a problem with the the TrackPoint device. This thing here. What it does is it causes the um, the cursor to randomly move in odd directions. You could be working away and all of a sudden the cursor will start drifting. So then you have to go ahead and uh, you can press this in the opposite direction. It'll, it'll stay there, but you can't do that forever. So I'm going to just disable the device by unplugging it. And uh, pull, the kit, pull the plug on that thing. Rather than put money into this machine, I'm going to just repair it as cheaply as possible. Um, <clears throat> my uncle currently has my my old Toshiba satellite, which I'm planning on getting back once I give this to him. Um, come on. I can't get it out. I think it just plugs in. Nope. Apparently it's part of the uh hold on. Maybe if I release this latch I can get it out. There we go. I thought it just pressed in, like some of them often do, but it doesn't. I've got to release the catch first. There we go. No, it certainly doesn't pull out. Um, it looks like it's actually part of the cable. I might have to cut it. The other end is soldered in. No, it's not pulling out, so I'm going to have to cut the cable right here. Um, that's the only thing wrong with it is, is that stupid thing. So let's go ahead and cut it. Okay, here we go. Yoink. So here's the trackpad connector. So the trackpad still works fine, it's just a stupid track point causing cursor drift. I've only seen that happen once before on an IBM. And I ended up having to replace the whole keyboard. But as long as you have a track a trackpad. I mean, there's no need to have that. Most people don't even know how to use these. Um, the thing is, most laptops today don't have these. <laughs> and um, most laptop owners today, especially the ones who didn't own laptops in the 90s, have never seen a track point. They don't know how to use them. They um, It just confuses them. I've seen that happen 
while we're all apart here, I'm going to just torque up all these screws and uh, get that all taken care of. Because over time, these screws will loosen up and, uh, you know, cause looseness. All right, that's good enough. Let's put it together. So anyway, this is a Pentium 3 1 gigahertz machine. It has the Pentium 3M. They actually still made the Pentium 3Ms until the Pentium 4 mobiles were, were ready to go. Um, but during the Pentium 4, the early Pentium 4 days, you could still buy a Pentium 3 laptop because it was the only uh, low power chip that Intel had at the time. Um, <clears throat> which is why this machine was available or manufactured on 916-2002, well into the Pentium 4 generation. Um, so it's one of the fastest Pentium 3s ever made. Um, and it is quite a machine. It, it's not sluggish at all. Um, it runs natively, runs Windows XP perfectly fine. And uh, actually isn't a bad machine at all. Apparently the battery still has a charge. <laughs> I should have taken that, taken that off. Anyway. No, it's dead. Okay. Um, no, it's still going. So, turn that off. The only way to fix these hinges would be to replace them. So I'll just explain to him that he just needs to be careful with it because it just doesn't really hold itself up anymore. I'm quite loose, too. I'm to tighten that up a little bit. Um, all he wants it for is light web browsing and not much else. And of course, that's what he says, and what he means is two different things. But you got 512 megs of PC133 RAM. Um, so it's not exactly a uh, screamer, but, you know, it is what it is. It'll make him happy for a little while until he can afford a, a decent laptop. But I actually like the way this one's made. I mean, it's pretty rugged. I mean, it survived all these years. Um, no problem. Um, it's not really cracked or anything. There are no signs of abuse. It would have been nice to have the optional docking station that goes with it, but... Um, I'll take what I can get, you know. But the actual model number is PP01L, which I, I really don't like model numbers like that because they don't actually mean anything. Um, you know, this laptop was probably sold in a hundred different configurations and um, <clears throat> just confusing when they, when they come up with model numbers like that. It's, it's just misleading and confusing. Get these all forked up. There is a missing screw in the back. And these two are kind of loose. So I'm missing a hinge screw. I have to find one of those. Figure out what size it is. I, I know I've got some. These are all loose. Whenever I work on a customer's laptop, I always retorque all the screws because they do come loose over time. Especially if the machine is used in a portable setting. Um, not every laptop is used this way, but Anyway, we get these all tightened up, put it together, and I'll fire it up. And this hard drive has been replaced at one point um, with a 40 gig. I imagine this thing originally had like a 20 gig or so. Um, looking for a production date on this drive, I don't see one. Usually they're hidden in the numbers there somewhere. Oh, there it is. October something. This is 12903. So maybe it was original. I, I just I couldn't imagine a machine, a Pentium 3 laptop, no less, sold with a 40 gig drive originally. And why does it have a price on it? That's just really bizarre. It's like it was purchased from a repair shop or something. Because I've never seen any company put the, the price tags on their parts, even if it's CTO. Interesting. So I'm going to write down the model number of this card so I can download a driver for it. 
made 31204. It is a 2200BG. I have one more of these left. If I ever get another Dell, that can take it. Um, so there we go. Well, good news is, no more cursor anomalies. The other good news is, um, the wireless card works just fine. Tightening up the hinges seems to have helped it a little bit. Um, tightening it, I mean, that is the mounting area. But it's still very weak. But there you go. Look how shiny these keys are. They're very worn. Very worn. And this trackpad, too. But I've seen worse. Um, there you go. Wee.